So, welcome to a productive week in my life. We're entering the second quarter of 2024, which is wild if you think about it. I'm a creative entrepreneur that's hustling and adulting in New York City. But you probably already knew that though. So I figured to break the ice a little more, I'd do a Q&A while going about my days. good right now it's like 8 30 in the morning so i'm getting ready for work uh i work hybrid so i work two days in the office three days at home today's an office day but regarding this q a i sent in quite a bit of questions so i'm gonna answer a few of them before i head to work and i'm gonna try to make this quick because i'll be running on cp time sometimes so <laughs> So the first question, do you recommend to start a side hustle slash business that's related to your passion while working a nine to five or go all in on the business from the beginning? Um, I feel like you should definitely do both because a lot of times when you start in a passion, you start in a business, you're not making no profits, you're not making no money for real. And you do need to make money like to fund the business as well as live your life. So I will say like doing both allows you the opportunity to pay your bills, you know, live life um, while also funding your business. Now, if you're young and you're blessed enough to live with your parents, that's a little different. But for people that's my age, I'm 28, and you're never too late to get in the game. Like you're never too late to start a business, start a passion. Um, but by the time you're my age or older, you may have responsibilities that you need to tend to. And those responsibilities gotta get paid. So you gotta work and you gotta fund your, not, your um, creative passion. So. That's my answer for that. Second question, do you plan on staying in New York for a while or venture off to a new state? What will it take for you to do content creation full time and leave your nine to five? Yeah, I definitely plan on staying in New York for a little minute. New York is home. I'm a true New Yorker, born and raised. It's hard to envision my life outside of New York. And since my personal brand is so tied to the city, I feel like if I left for real, I would need to kind of rebrand. But at the same time, it's expensive to live here. And you know, 28, you never know with, you know, marriage, kids and all of that. Um, my life may take me elsewhere, but for right now, in the near future, New York is home, baby. And the last question before I head up out of here. Uh, how do you have time to manage a full-time career, YouTube, and still manage to have a social life? I'm trying to balance all three and having a difficult time. Brother. That is the trillion dollar question. The truth is, I don't got no balance for real. This is what I'm going in on full time and doing. I'm focusing on building my career rather than having a social life right now. Cause to be honest, I think the idea of balance, in my opinion, keeps you stagnant in an area. If you're trying to balance social life, you know, creative work and having a job, you're going to incrementally move the same way in each thing but everything has a different priority even though i work a nine to five job my priority is of course creating and building my brand and eventually having to you know eventually leaving the job and doing what i want to do so if that's my priority i got to spend more time doing that instead of balancing things instead of life being a balancing act i think it's a priority act based on what you want out of it so um I don't have an answer for you to how to balance things. All I can say is find out what you want to prioritize the most based on your goals and go full in. Because if you never realize like what you actually want to do, you might regret it later. So, hey, at the same time, if you never balance things and you work so much, and you don't spend time with family and build your social life, you might regret that too. So also got to recognize that every decision you make has a cost and it all depends if you want to pay that cost or not, if you want to pay the price. So. All right, now I gotta go to work. <laughs> I'm about here.
today was a long day of work. I ain't even gonna hold y'all. It'd be days like this where I'm filming while working in the office that it do be, it do be a little stressful, I'm not gonna lie, but it reminds me like what I'm striving for. And like real talk, like it's a bigger purpose, like using my job to fund my lifestyle right now, my creative entrepreneurial lifestyle right now, buying the equipment, funding the videos, it's imperative. But let me get to y'all questions. So, first of all, thanks for all the video posts you do on YouTube. Your videos has been an inspiration to me to thrive in making my life more productive and enjoyable. I started watching your videos last year, but the one with the getting my life together with an iPad pretty hits me hard. But hits me pretty hard. Love it when it's long because it's filled with pure content and stuff to learn. But I have a question though. What's the best and worst piece of advice you've ever received? Best and worst piece of advice I've ever received. Um, I'll try to rework it. I'll say like kind of cliche statements because I can't like recall advice. So I think the best kind of cliche statement I've heard and was told to me is like, you don't get something from nothing. And that's always been a constant reminder for me from when I get complacent, but I got big dreams. I got to remind myself like, bro, you're not putting in the work to achieve what you, what you asking for. You don't get something from nothing. That's not how the universe works. And the bad one, I mean, some people may not agree with me, but it's my thoughts on it. When people say like, you are unique because you're you, the idea of being unique has to be genuine. Like it has to be genuinely different. Just because you do, it doesn't make it different. If I do something that you're doing, just because I'm doing it doesn't make it different. And that pushes my creativity harder. It makes me look past my ego. Oh, cause D Dames is doing it. No, like, is this genuinely impactful? Is this genuine, genuinely unique? Is there nothing else out there like this on the internet or out there or out there that was produced like this? Taking my ego out of it, instead of being self-centered, really helps with me like pushing the boundaries of my own creativity. I see a lot of creatives now who just like, don't get me, like there's a lot of like copy and paste content on the internet is what I'm trying to say, right? And a lot of these creatives, in my opinion, have the idea that because they're the ones doing it, even though everybody else is doing it, it's unique. That's not the case. So that has to be like the worst advice I've ever heard. Like in an oversaturated market, yeah, just do what everybody else is doing and because you're doing it, it's different. No, it's not. Spend the time to actually think of what's genuinely different and once i started doing that because don't get me wrong like we all got to start somewhere once i started doing that once i started making content that i put a lot of thought into that i, I knew was not out on the internet like that or the way i'm spinning it is different that's when i started to grow and started to see a real you know change in viewership and support for the channel so that's kind of like a long winded answer and i hope that makes sense but Take your ego out of it. Make something genuine. Make something that's unique because it's honestly unique. So, yeah. Uh, what was your career steps from high school to now? Love the videos and creativity you put into them. That's funny. So when I was in high school, I was actually a writer, right? Some of y'all don't know, but I used to write little poems and stuff. I had little crushes I would write poems for. And that was more so in middle school, but when I got into high school, like I was still like a little writer, writing poetry and stuff like that. But I got my first internship when I was a junior in high school. And I worked for AE Networks, like the television company. And I was an intern and that was my first introduction to, to marketing and television broadcasting and production. And I loved it, it was fast paced. Um, and it gave me direction. Like if you're a young person watching this channel and you don't really know what field you wanna get into, internships are so important. That was my junior year internship. And then my senior year in high school, I worked for Ogilvy & Mather, which is an ad agency. And they they like produce ads for like different companies and stuff like that. So again, into the world of production and marketing and advertising. And that was kind of my lane. And obviously now I'm a content creator, director for my own stories on YouTube. Um, but yeah, from high school, that's what it was, right? Yeah, from high school to now, that's pretty much been the journey. Um, I've kind of always been into film and production. I got my love from my grandmother. 
I think one of the other questions like asked me that, so I'm gonna, you know, dive more into my love of production and movies um, in another day, but yeah. Okay, so the last question I'm gonna answer today. Hi, I'm from Scandinavia, what's up? Love your content, question. What inspired you to do the content that you are doing now? And two, what is your end goal with the channel or just life? So, <laughs> I think I got inspiration from a lot of different people. Like many of us, I'm multifaceted. I don't just love tech, I have, I have an actual life outside of the technology I use. I love fashion, I love pets, like, <laughs> I love a lot of different things. And I took from a lot of different creators. I think in the fashion scene, I really love Daniel Simmons, right? But in the tech scene, shout out to like Siobhan, like Chevy. Um, shout out to Nikki Oz. You know, shout out to MKBHD. He's the one that kind of got me into like enjoying tech for real. I always liked tech, but he, when he would break it down, I'd be like, yo, this is fire. It's cinematic, it's tough. Um, and then I just started combining my lifestyle with it. Shout, shout out to like Kelly Wasaka um, in New York. Um, your mom Ashley, what's up, y'all? <laughs> just all these like different creatives, like Ron Doug, Phil Kofer, like I took a lot of inspiration from them and I kind of curated my lane based off of different parts of my lifestyle in conjunction with my love for tech. And I've always been into movies. I always looked into like the production quality and you know, just the whole breakdown of film and stuff like that. So you mix all that together and that's how you get D-Dames today just like a mixture of very cinematic storytelling of how tech integrates within my lifestyle while sharing like genuine experiences of me adulting in new york city like this is what this channel is about and that's how it kind of all came together so and your second question is what is your end goal with the channel or just life i've never spoken about it even now i feel like i shouldn't talk about it but you know it's q a so this is what i signed up for Honestly, my goal in life is to produce an award-winning limited series, whether it's a you know a TV show or a movie. Um, eventually, I do want to transition my content into making short films, making limited series, um, whether that's a web series that gets picked up by, you know, hopefully a big network like Stars or Netflix or whatever. But that's my real goal, uh, to sharpen my craft right now, build a loyal audience, network as much as I can. Um, obviously, get the channel to where to a place where it brings in more income so I can fund these projects because I feel like I got a story to tell and I know I could tell it you feel what I'm saying so right now this get in my life together series is kind of an early preview into the stories that I want to tell on television so or in movies so that's my ultimate goal to you know be the director and the cinematographer of an award-winning television show or movie and I know it's gonna happen I feel it every day I'm getting better with my craft because I'm putting in the hours and I'm just real confident and also real grateful for y'all for tuning in to the channel so yeah that's my goals there's a lot more questions but I'm gonna break these up into different days so that you know the questions kind of make sense for like whatever I'm doing this is a productive week in my life so <sighs> being real productive I'm tired right now but um yeah, these are good questions too, y'all. Good questions, but yeah. Oh man, oh man. All right, so I appreciate y'all questions so far. It's been a lot of questions. But I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Andar. So y'all know how big my iPad Pro is in my workflow. It's so integral. I don't go nowhere without it. And it's important for me to rock accessories that not only like are great for the iPad, but also like kind of fit my aesthetic and my vibe as well. And that's where Andar comes in and this Fire Mav Folio. 
So the cool thing about Andar is all of their products, 100% full grain leather. And you know me, I love my leather products. But this folio is the perfect blend of fashion and productivity with the full grain leather. And it just seamlessly blends in all the areas that I usually go into, whether that be a coffee shop, uh, my crib, or somewhere else where I can get work done and also kind of vibe out. But hold on, y'all. Y'all know I'm a New Yorker through and through. And there's not a bag that's more essential to a New Yorker than a tote bag. Andar also sent me their shopper's tote. And I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, this is a very big and sturdy bag. It has a magnetic snap closure. I rock with this bag too. Get like a little, little, you know what I'm saying? Like a little fit shake, like, mess with the bag, the bag is tough. So if you're interested, use my code DDames15 for 15% off your next order. All the products that Andar offers are full grain leather. Also, if you pay $75 or more, you get free shipping. And there's a 90 day return policy just in case. But again, shout out to Andar for sponsoring this video. Use my code, 15% off, and I'm gonna catch y'all with more questions. Yeah. I've been doubted. I've been counted out. I've known dark nights. Now I made it out. These are my deepest secrets. Thought I'd take them to the grave. But I gotta be real right now. So trust me, I mean what I say. What's good, y'all? So, today's a cool day. First of all, it's my work from home day. So, it's Thursday, and I work from home today and tomorrow, which is great, because I don't like using the trains all the time. <laughs> but um, today's a cool day. I have, um, I'm going to be featured on a podcast today, actually in the next 30 minutes, so I'm going to try to make this quick. But, yeah, um, the host of iPad Pros reached out to me. One of you guys, like a subscriber or supporter, like sent them my video and they reached out, wanted to feature me on their podcast. So um, they sent me like a whole list of questions. We're going to have a cool conversation about like using the iPad and productivity and stuff like that. Um, and I'll link it in the description so y'all can listen. Hopefully it's out by the time this video is posted so I could do that. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. But to get to y'all questions, how was it starting YouTube? Did you wait until you had all the equipment? So when I started YouTube, it was 2000, I think 17. I think my first upload was like end of October or like end of November. Um, and YouTube, the landscape was like very different compared to like what it is now. Um, I did not wait until I had all the equipment to start my channel. Um, I was using, when I started my channel, I was in college. So I was using a lone camera from the like, you know, camera section in there or whatever. And then after a while, like, I was just bought my own camera because, like, I can make videos when I wanted to because obviously I had to return their camera um, so other students could use it. Um, but I started off with a camera and no mic. <laughs> I think just a camera and a tripod. Second question, could you share some insight into your creative process and how you come up with ideas for your content? Um, so I feel like to have a creative process, you have to have an identity. I know what my brand is. I feel like there may be creators who like dibble and dabble in a lot of things and may not have an anchor. So first of all, I think you need to understand who your brand is and have a brand identity so that when you come up with ideas, not only is it creative, it makes sense. But um, yeah, my creative process starts with music and I get a lot of inspiration from watching television shows and movies, um, looking at different focal lengths, color grading. Um, so yeah, if you're into content creation, I would advise Mainly storytelling, I would advise like looking at what's on TV, Shot Deck, which is a, a platform or website where you can look at different reference images from different movies and television shows. That helps me a lot as well in terms of storyboarding and building out the visual language for the stories that I plan on telling. Um, and this last question before I get ready for this uh, <laughs> podcast, because a lot of questions. Um, how are you able to use commercial music without YouTube silencing it or taking it down? Great question. I've seen that come up a few times. So I use a, a music licensing platform called Epidemic Sound, and there are other platforms out there. But Epidemic Sound is a, is a subscription. You can either pay for the year like I did or pay monthly, 
and there's a bunch of artists and music and instrumentals on our website that when you have the uh, active subscription gives you license to use these platforms to use the music on your YouTube channel or your Instagram channel so that you don't get flagged uh, that's one way and the easiest way because they have a pretty vast music library and once you find your sound like a lot of y'all know I use Katori Walker like that's pretty much the sound for this channel um, and like other beats as well but once you find your sound like it's pretty easy from there the other way which is more risky is I use beats and songs from like different YouTube producers so if you check my descriptions I usually you know shout them out in the comments but um, Sometimes like down the road, like a, a video from eight months ago may get flagged because a YouTube beat producer like sold the beat to a different artist and now the artist is using that instrumental. Your, your video got the instrumental and then boom, you get a copyright, right? Um, so it is instrumental, kind of use it at your own risk. Um, so that's the second way, just like being keen on like the dope YouTube producers on the platform and then kind of using their beats and then shouting them out because that's really important. My fool, y'all. My camera died. That's the first time that ever happened. So yeah, it's 9.37. I got this podcast at 10. So I'm going to prepare for that because I don't do nothing without preparation. Don't leave me all on red. That's some cold ass shit. Do you hear me later finished, tonight? Uh, being a guest on Tim's podcast. Say what up to Tim. Appreciate you for having me on. Maybe when you close it, yeah. Making like a nigga, you be moving like a nigga. Got me checking for you, go nuts, yeah. In this life that we live, what more to it is being happy and being fulfilled. Yeah. But to do that, you gotta love yourself enough to expect great things. What up, BG? Before the world can see it. Expect greatness. Mama knew I'd be great as Alexander back when she was pregnant with me. No surprises, this was she expected. Feel me? She wonder hood, understood I was expecting greatness. Y'all expected good. And shit, I'm far from that. I been one of them ones like on Parsons back They, they want our self esteem low and our arches flat I stand tall ready to face the madness like when March is back <laughs> Yet I still find it obnoxious how Sometimes the world put us down just to watch us drown Have us dwelling on the past like we had options While La Sally used to sell seashells but she more conscious now Beware the ships you let on too, Caesars is cool but Dog it's time to bet on you, time to let go of expectations they done set on you Most will sleep while you become a star like red on blue, be the best You gotta see it to achieve it Steady asking God for a sign, it's time to read it House of doubts in the back of your mind It's time to leave it manifesting good energy, nigga It's time to be it, be great, nigga uh, It ain't too late, nigga We all trying to be great, nigga my mama on my soul, I promise it ain't never too late, nigga. Oh, man. Man, oh man. I ain't gonna lie, today, today was a long day, y'all. Also, my camera definitely got like 2% of battery. Let me see. Not 2%, two bars. So I'm gonna try my best to, uh, answer these questions quick so it don't die with me. So Coco the Great asked for tips for something, tips for building discipline in their craft and fully expressing their vision. Ooh, tips for building discipline. <sighs> That's tough because even with myself, I'm not the most disciplined individual. I have my spurts where I'm super motivated and the discipline kind of follows. But then when I'm going through life, and going through things, the motivation kind of wanes, and so does the discipline. Um, so even though I'm not an expert on it and I still have my ups and downs, I think what I do to try to maintain being disciplined is staying in my routine. I realize that when I get off my routine, when I don't pray in the mornings, when uh, I'm not as intentional with doing things, when I'm not working out, um, 
when I'm not constantly planning or editing or filming, that's when the discipline wanes. And I find that as I stay productive, the discipline kind of just stays with me. The best way to stay disciplined, this is what I'm really trying to say. The best way to stay disciplined is to nip things in the bud as soon as they occur. I realize that for me, if I miss two days in the gym consecutively, that is usually the sign of, of a downward spiral of me not being productive, of me not being disciplined. It really takes the presence of mind to know when you're about to go on a downward spiral for you to remain disciplined. And again, for you, that may be different. For me, that's two days outside the gym. Two cannot become three. And that is something I'm very intentional on in the month of March, because the month of February, I won't even lie, February took me out. January was great, as y'all seen in my other video. February took me out the game. So nipping things in the bud, as soon as they occur, so they don't disrupt your routine over a long period of time will help you stay disciplined. That's my answer. Bay la Bay. <laughs> Bayla Bay asked, what's the hardest thing for you about remaining disciplined? Again, questions on discipline. That's probably why I broke it up this way. Um, the hardest part about remaining disciplined is that you can't control things out of your control, right? And there's a two parts to this thing I'm about to say, but you can't control things out of your control. Sometimes life will just life on you and things will spiral. Um, but a lot of the times I realized, and I wrote about this in my digital journal, that we create our own suffering, which can then lead to being unmotivated or not as disciplined. And I realized that um, I had like a weird kind of understanding of pain, right? Um, a lot of times people say pain is gain, and if you're not going through something, you're not growing through something, which is true, right? But what kind of pain are you going through for real? Is this self-inflicted wounds or is this pain because of things out of your control? And I realized that for me, I get in my own way a lot. You feel what I'm saying? I realized that like, I kept going through things and thinking I was growing through them simply because I was going through things. Like, you know, I'm gonna grow from this situation. You know, it, it keep on happening, but it's I, right. you know, I'm gonna dust it off. And I realized that like, is it really growth if you keep putting yourself in the same positions? You gotta think about these things. So the best way, that wasn't your question. You said, what's the hardest thing about remaining disciplined? The hardest thing about remaining disciplined is that sometimes you can get in your own way and it takes for you, it takes you to remove your ego and to look at yourself outside yourself. Shameless, low down. A lot of things start with me intrinsically because I realize I have the power to change a lot of things. Is it? But the only thing that gets in the way is me sometimes. So that's the answer for that. I, I'm sorry, brother. Z4 R Z Y. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Shout out to you. Hi. What is your biggest motivation to keep doing things every day? Um, my biggest motivation. I feel like my biggest motivation is, or the things that keep me motivated is remembering like where I come from and you know, how far I want to take things. You know, uh, I, I don't really get too deep in these videos. The last video did kind of get kind of deep, but like, you know, I don't come from like a privileged background. Like honestly, like growing up, we was poor. You feel what I'm saying? Me, my sisters, my mother, you know, we was poor. We lived in a shelter for a while, you know, um, bounced around from house or apartment to apartment until like, you know, I was, you know, a little younger and in my elementary, middle school years, and we found like housing that was adequate. And then, you know, once we found the housing for real, 2008 came, you already know the recession. And then, you know, we back at square one, living at my grandma house and things like that. So I don't come from money for real. And my goal is to honestly set my family up for real, but I want to do that through telling stories. Um, and I have a niece, I have four nephews, and I really just want to be an example for them of resilience, of, you know, like staying focused, staying on the grind and getting everything that you want out of life um, through my example for real. Um, and I think it's important for me to say that and express that, especially as a black man, because like, I didn't grow up for real um, with my father, like a lot of male influences. And again, I grew up with my three sisters and a single mom. 
and my grandmother. It's a lot of female influences for real. And now that I got four nephews, I got little little dudes, like little young men looking up to me, as well as my niece. And, you know, I just think about my life and growing up, and I just really want to be an example for my family and be a financial, uh, not anchor, but be a gateway for real to like expanding the family resources. So this isn't something I've talked about before on here, but honestly that keeps me very motiv motivated every day. Um, and then outside of that, I got big dreams. Like, I got really big dreams that I talked about yesterday with you know me wanting to be the cinematographer and director of an award-winning show or movie. So yeah, that's what kind of keeps me motivated. And um, the big thing is everybody talks about on social media, motivation goes up and down. You feel what I'm saying? Some days I'm not motivated and that's where discipline has to carry you on them days that you're not feeling the most motivated. But, and then and on times you gotta remind yourself that when you human, you're allowed to have days where you're not as motivated and you don't get to the things you gotta do. But after you go through your experiences and your feelings, you gotta, gotta get back on the horse. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and I think it's important that I express that, especially for the men watching this channel. And I keep addressing the men because I look at the comments, I get my DMs, and it's a lot of y'all that's showing love and like, you know, telling me y'all experiences and like my journey and my experience has like opened y'all up to journaling or like y'all walking faith and stuff like that. And it's real conversations we be having. And I'd be like remiss to say that, like, yo, we experience real life and like we gotta process those emotions. We can't like suppress them. Y'all see me, I had a therapy session today. I'm expressing myself. I journal a lot, I'm expressing myself. Um, and just don't suppress the emotions. But with being a man, you gotta also remember to get back on the horse. You feel what I'm saying? Like nothing is gonna be given to us. We gotta earn everything that we get. Um, so process those emotions, you know, feel those feels, allow yourself to be human. But then also recognize we got business to handle. You feel what I'm saying? Like we got we got things to do, we got families to look out for, we got, you know, miles to feed, or we got dreams to chase. So yeah, that kinda I'm over here rambling, I kinda took on a life of its own. But um yeah. As I was saying, I'll give you a little change in background. Uh the day is not over. I actually have a men's group uh to go to in terms of like religion and faith and there's actually some questions regarding that um that i got so i'm gonna answer those questions there but today is a long day um and i'm just feeling like really blessed today i'm feeling like really in, in high and great spirits right now so um yeah yeah All right, y'all, so <laughs> I just finished the second workout um, or another workout this week. Um, it's the weekend, it's Saturday, and I told y'all I was headed to the men's group uh, a day or two ago, and I was gonna film it, right? My church men's group, I was gonna film it, I was gonna answer more y'all questions because y'all sent me questions regarding faith. But after it, I was so tired, I ain't even gonna lie. I'm sorry, Jesus, but I kind of closed my eyes for a second and I, I fell asleep a few times and then I was so tired. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just finished another workout. I feel great. 
honestly, I talked about it more on social media, so y'all should definitely follow me there because I'll be posting like more candid thoughts um, on my Instagram. But, you know, February took me out the game. I had the blues, I was throwing off my routine. Like, I just couldn't get it right in February after having a great January. March, I feel renewed. My birthday passed a few weeks ago, and I'm kind of back in my routine. I'm back to doing my normal thing, so I, I feel great. So, like, being active, like, this is so important for me. But let me talk to y'all. Let me get these questions right. Uh, let me see. <laughs> I'm gonna get these names wrong. Ponchi, one, two, three, shout out to you. How's the walk? with God going. I recommend reading a proverb a day since there's 31 chapters. Good wisdom. Um, I think my walk with God is going like pretty interesting. I think, well, to be honest, like right now I'm struggling with the idea of control, you know, in the word and a lot of time during the sermon and just even in casual conversations with like other Christians or people who are on a similar walk, they'll talk about how, you know, let go of control. like give it up to God, like God's plan is, you know, better than any plan that you could like ever come up with. And I feel like that's a conflict for me because I'm a person that likes control. I'm a person that is future oriented and to be future oriented, that means you have to be a planner. So I'll be planning. I have my own idea of how my life should plan out or pan out, I should say. And the idea of kind of giving up control is kind of foreign for me. And in the month of February, I was struggling mightily. Um, and I was trying to like, not dictate as much. I was trying to not dictate as much. Um, and I felt like because I wasn't dictating as much, like the things and the people around me and things like that, like things were kind of spiraling out of control. And I felt like I had to take the reins on the horse and like set everyone in line and do all of this stuff. Um, to which like, I really didn't do. And, you know, I was going back and forth with myself, like, you know, would things be spiraling if, you know, I took control of things, but things was already spiraling when I had control of things. So, you know, right now it's a struggle um, with the idea of letting go of control and following God's plan. Um, and that kind of leads into, like, knowing his voice. I think I got a good idea of, you know, what his voice is now, because a lot of, a a lot of time, like, you know, you could fall into your own bias. You know, like you could ask God for a path and what you want to do is so loud that you trick yourself into thinking that's God's plan when it's really yours and you kind of tricking yourself into, you know, following your way. So, um, but in general, I think it's going great. Test, 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 test. Okay, so Davian Sierra, again, my fault if I get your name messed up. You asked quite a few questions. <laughs> uh, she said, okay, what videography tools would you recommend to a beginner? Uh, if we talk in camera, I would say start out with your phone. The Sony ZV series, small compact cameras. You get to like learn camera settings and like you know, exposure and aperture and things of that nature um, while also saving money. I'd recommend getting mics. Rode offers great mics. In a video in like a few weeks, I'll have uh, a video about like my camera equipment. Um, and I would get a tripod. Those three things, cameras, mic, tripods, you should be set. Um, would you care to share your film story? <laughs> so my love for film really started hanging with my grandma. My grandmother is my best, my first best friend. Um, me and her, tight. Uh, me and her spent a lot of time together when I was younger, a kid. I was born in Harlem, raised in Lower East Side. So in Harlem, there's the Magic Johnson Theater. We'd be in that movie theater for hours because she would take me to see one movie, end up sneaking into other showings. <laughs> when I'd be at her crib, she'd be having me watching like all of these different movies like adult movies um, in terms of like the themes, right? And again, like just really cinematic movies and things like that. And you know, I was always a nerd. I, I spent a lot of time in the boys club, specifically in the, in the media room. 
I was making posters, I learned how to do film, garage man, and all that other stuff. So from a young age, my love for film was always there. As I grew up, I kind of put like all of that stuff away and picked up basketball and like, that's where my athletic journey like really started. But like, I never lost touch with um, my creative side. So when I ended up tearing my ACL in college and the prospects of maybe playing a professional career overseas was kind of cooked, like it was done. I leaned more into my creative talents. So that's kind of how I like all started. <laughs> Uh, how has your walk with God molded you to be the man, uh, to be the man he has destined? TBD. TBD. Would younger you be proud of who you become spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally, mentally? That's a deep question. You ask some great questions. Um, I think younger me would be proud of me. And then younger me would probably be a little sad. Um, I was always an athlete. When I was in um, elementary school, I ran track. Uh, high school, I was my uh, high school basketball team's captain, um, as well as the second leading scorer in my high school. And in college, even though my career was cut a little short, because I tore my ACL, I'm the third, at least from what I remember, I'm the third all-time leader in block shots. So. Younger me would be sad that like injury kind of hampered a potential, you know, professional career. Um, but I think younger me would also be proud of how I pivoted. It's not easy to have a dream stripped away from you and pivot into something else that's just as, that, ju that brings you just as much joy and just as lucrative. Um, so yeah, younger me would be proud of that. Um, and the last question I'll answer, at least in this gym, from Sammy Grandin all day. <laughs> <laughs> I like the name. Uh, Sammy said, hi, I was curious, do you think that you're the man you always dreamed of being? Because I truly watch your content so I can be a better man. Yo, that's love. I ain't gonna hold you. That's love. <sighs> man, a lot, of, a lot of the fellas hit me up and tell me how my videos impact them in different ways, but in the ways that like they want to like better themselves and I always appreciate those messages because I'm on the same journey as y'all you feel what I'm saying like I'm not where I see myself yet but I'm taking steps daily to get there um it's not easy doing it I have my my good days I have my bad days um I have days where I question myself or I'm not as confident or I'm not as productive but on those days it really sets into perspective like you know why i gotta go hard and things like that so um are you the man you always dreamed of being i think i'm getting there you know your story and like the adversity that you go through and molds you so right now i'm in the thick of a new season in my life where there's a lot of adversity right now i'm questioning a lot of things my faith in god is like being tested as well and you know the faith in myself is being tested as well so um, although I'm not the man I want to be just yet, I think a lot of the things that I'm going through right now is prepping me to be that man. So if you're watching this and you're in the thick of a storm or a new season in your life as well, like I probably probably know what I'm talking about. You can feel where I'm coming from. So um, that's so solid that you watch the, the videos and uh, like to better yourself. Um, so you can see a little bit of me and you. So. Yeah, I hope I answered those questions well. I'm not gonna lie, my brain is like <laughs> still in gym mode, but uh, yeah, there's a lot more questions to answer. And the day is beautiful, so I'ma shower up. I'ma find a coffee shop or just go somewhere else. And I gotta get some work done, actually. Um, there's a lot of brand stuff going on. I gotta film for this video and other videos and plan some other stuff. So yeah, come on with the boy, of course. So let's get out of here.
Did it again, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on Two doors in my coupe, I look better under you Girl, I love you, you my truth the OJ with that juice, got that magic 32 yeah. Tell me what you trying yeah. to do I got so it's the next day, it's Monday um, I'm in a nice little coffee shop uh, I did on my Instagram ask y'all to send additional questions. <laughs> it's a lot of questions in this video, so I'm going to try to answer more questions um, and see what the vibe is. I don't know if the video ends here or not, and I hope y'all can hear me good, but yeah. Uh, Danny, what's up, Danica? Asked, I actually want to know what got you interested in film, creating, directing, etc. I think I mentioned it earlier, but my grandma... She used to just take me to a lot of movies. Um, we watched a lot of movies when I was at her house. And that kind of introduced me to... Um, that introduced me to cinematography for real and film. And when I was in the boys club, I, was, I learned how to do it, like, technical-wise. So that's kind of what got me started. Directing, though, I think once I was able to see that I could bring visions to life in my specific way of creating content, um, I thought it was like really unique and different. That's when I was like, oh, I could direct something. Like I could, you know, not really be in front of the camera, but like offer directions. Granted, I still offer directions when I would, you know, get help sometimes. But yeah, kind of rearing off track. But yeah, what's your goals in life? Hmm. Talking about life goals. Uh, my goal is to be the director and cinematographer of an award-winning television show or movie that is my my goal right now in life um, I think again my passion is making an impact through telling visual stories so that's my biggest goal but outside of that my goal is to honestly live a very like uh, holistic lifestyle in terms of making sure my spirit mind and body are all in alignment um, in my 6 a.m. video Canary and I, we had a conversation about that, but it's really important to me that, you know, the mind, body, and spirit is really in alignment. And that's my biggest goal in life, just to have those three things in order. It's a little loud in here. Let's actually, I'm going to transition y'all like outside because it's a little loud. All right, so it should be a little quieter out here, ironically. But um, yeah, to get back to your question, my life goal, honestly, is to have my mind, body, and spirit aligned. I feel like when I think about, I'm 28 now, so when I think about the spectrum of my 20s, um, I tore my ACL when I was 23. Um, no, I tore, I tore when I was 22, actually. Um, tore my ACL when I was 22, had my senior basketball season stripped from me because of that injury. And then in 2022, I tore my Achilles at 20... 26 yeah it's on my achilles at 26 um so dealing with like the physical setback as well as like the mental scars from that um and then obviously i'm in therapy now and like am learning how to process my emotions and i'm journaling and i'm learning just a whole nother side of myself that you know i didn't know early in my 20s so i feel like through my experiences um again the body the surgery um, the mind going through physical therapy and the spirit obviously is like me being more intentional with my walk with God and you know going to church and stuff like that I feel like at 28 towards the end of the spectrum of my 20s I feel like I can finally put the pieces together um, my body is in a, in a great place right now um, physically my mind is in a, in a better place now and my spirit, you know, I still got a lot to learn and I'm very early on in my walk, but I do feel like my spirit is like getting there as well. And 28, I've said it in the the last video, but the year of awakening, this is the year where I put it all together. And I'm excited for like the personal journey that, you know, I'm on right now. So I know a lot of me answering your questions kind of deep. Um... Tanja Sarah said, why now MacBook? Is the iPad not good enough or what do you miss here? Uh, simply put, I can afford the MacBook now. <laughs> you know, the iPad 
it's not going nowhere. I'm still using it in my workflow, but I have the money to buy my MacBook. What else we got? Amen B9 asks, why don't you design your YouTube channel within main episodes and long videos? Within main episodes, the long videos we love and normal shorter videos that require less work. Um, I think simply put, the way I tell stories is okay, somebody I know. I think <laughs> I think simply put, the way I tell stories is there needs to be a natural progression of things and i feel like telling shorter stories is yes you can do that in a shorter t amount of time but i like my videos to kind of marinate and take you guys along for a ride i can come up with ideas of shorter videos for sure because i know a lot of you guys complain that i don't post enough which is a valid you know point of feedback but at least for right now, I do intend to continue to make the long videos until I create a series that I feel is compelling enough to tell shorter stories. So hopefully that makes sense. My boy, I am, I am Brown, what's, what's good bro? Uh, how's life treating you, brother? Hopefully we can chop it up in person one day. Hold on. Got to make sure that. <laughs> Got to make sure this thing on. Um, life is treating me interesting right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I talked about it earlier, but, you know, I have been struggling in my decision-making process in regards to certain things. And I found that I kept creating my own suffering. So... Once I kind of stood firm, or I'm learning to stand firm in certain decisions and just making choices and setting boundaries, I feel like this year I'm learning how to set more boundaries with people, places, and things. Um, and I do find that in the boundary setting process, I'm finding more peace, but I'm not perfect at it. So right now I'm in a place where I'm trying to find my peace, my brother. <laughs> And for sure, hopefully we chop it up one day because we, we be talking and I, I mess with you, bro. Uh, Chill, Chills YR. I'm sorry, I know I'm messing y'all names up. Would you be interested in being a cinematographer for a show film? Absolutely. Absolutely. For my own project, I, I do have an idea. I think it was for if it was for another project, I would need to know what the story is. I don't want my name just... I don't want my name just attached to anything because of an opportunity. I wanted to actually be impactful or be interesting or entertaining. I mean something. So I'd absolutely be interested in being uh, the cinematographer for, for a short film, whether it's mine or somebody else's, if, you know, it aligns. Mm -hmm. And the last question, crazy, the last question. Any advice on how to navigate plus network in New York City? I'm heavily contemplating moving there. Honestly, in New York City, you just got to put yourself out there, for real. I feel like people who come here aren't used to the hustle and bustle lifestyle and how fast-paced things are, and they be hiding in a shell. If you want to network in New York City, you kind of got to learn how to be aggressive. You got to learn how to take your opportunity when it's presented, because it may not be there at another point in time. Um, you got to learn how to talk to people um, in public places. Um, what else? Uh, navigating the city. Obviously, if you come here, you got to learn how to navigate the New York transit system, the MTA. Um, but honestly, the city is about being bold. This is a bold city. And you're not going to make it here or navigate well here if you don't have some type of attitude to you, I should say. Um, again, this is all depending on what you want to do. I have no idea. But if we're talking about networking and and stuff like that. You got to be bold. You got to talk to the people and you can't be in the shell. So um, I would say come here, like come to the city and experience it for yourself. There's no other place like this on earth. I love the city. I'm biased. So yeah, I think that concludes this Q&A. And I hope y'all got something from this. This was fun answering y'all questions and it was cool breaking the ice. You guys are a little off center. Hold on. But yeah, uh, my name is D. Dames. I create tech and lifestyle videos, so 
you know if you enjoyed this video definitely give it a subscribe um i know i don't really be introducing myself like that so yeah i make tech and lifestyle videos within the framework of pursuing my passion and growing my personal brand while working a nine to five so being a creative entrepreneur within new york city um and hustling and grinding and adulting and figuring it out so yeah, if you're enjoying these vlogs, if you're enjoying the integration of the tech in my lifestyle, again, definitely sub to the channel, and I'll be giving you guys the next one soon. So, actually, I gotta get some work done. So, I'll holla at y'all. Deuce. Crime rates in these million dollar houses Seen the judge make grown men cry like they childish Only way is up, we just trying to keep a balance Bad will save for money, so we often borrow dollars I'm Jeez. proud of me Finally learned how to be Dog days out of me Really start loving me I'm proud of me Finally learned how to be Dog days out of me Really start loving me off the stairway, in a different headspace, finally in the doorway. This is a for sure thing. This is a for sure thing.